Whiskey hunting season is upon us, so here's my five most anticipated releases. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Bourbon Hutch, and thanks so much for joining me on this journey through the world of whiskey. So that's right, we're reaching the end of August here, launching ourselves into September, the rest of the fall, which is really considered whiskey hunting season. Most distilleries are gonna be releasing their most allocated, limited, special bottles throughout this time period and toward the end of the year. So mostly September, October, November are really the, the prime time, but December kind of gets added in there as well. And it's just gonna be kind of a free for all and a bonanza of awesome whiskey releases. I wanted to create a list then of just the five that I am most looking forward to trying to really keep an eye out for. Technically, there are six bottles on this list, but two of them kind of go together. So just for fun, I kind of ranked these from highly anticipated to most anticipated. So number one will be my most anticipated release. But let's start with number five, which is technically two bottles, and that's going to be Larceny Barrel Proof and Elijah Craig Barrel Proof Batch C923. So if you watch a lot of the Bourbon Hutch here, you know that I have a lot of those different Elijah Craig and Larceny releases. I like the whiskey overall quite a bit, and this year I'm really trying to focus on getting all three of each uh, batches, so they do three annual releases, A, B, and C batch. I've been able to get both A and B for Larceny and Elijah Craig. Would love to get the C batches to have the full set. It's also just pretty dang good whiskey for relatively reasonable pricing and pretty findable. In terms of allocated releases, these are a little bit easier to find. Larceny Barrel Proof is going to be around $60 MSRP and Elijah Craig is around $70 MSRP. So relatively affordable and somewhat realistic to find, so those go first on the list. Number four on my list is going to be Bardstown Bourbon Company Discovery Series number 11. So I have Discovery Series number eight from Bardstown. I've tasted Bardstown Discovery Series number six. Really liked both of those. In fact, number eight is one of my favorite whiskeys of all time. One of the reasons I am super excited for this Discovery Series number 11 release and really want this bottle in particular is that the blend here is 73% a 13-year-old Kentucky bourbon. It is 21% a 10-year-old Kentucky bourbon. And then I believe it's 6% of a six-year-old weeded bourbon from Bardstown. And I have the bottled in bond weeded from Bardstown that's six years old. And that alone is really, really good stuff. So add in some really well-aged other Kentucky bourbons. And I think this is just gonna be a phenomenal blend. So really looking forward to this one. MSRP here is usually around $140, so quite expensive, but for the right batch, I definitely think it's worth it. All right, number three on the list is one from a lineup that I've never tasted, but have always wanted to try something from it, and that's gonna be Parker's Heritage 10-year-old cast strength rye release. So again, Parker's Heritage is one of those kind of bucket list items for me that I haven't been able to try yet, in fact, it went on my bucket list bourbons that I wanna try before I die. So if you haven't seen that video, go check that out. But this Parker's Heritage is a 10 year old rye, which is quite well aged for a rye. It's 125 proof. I think that's gonna have quite a lot of punch. And from what I've heard, a lot of these Parker's Heritage releases, like the double barreled blend and others have just been really, really awesome and well liked. So I would love to get my hands on one of these they are quite a bit more limited and difficult to find, so likelihood is low, but hey, it's gonna be on my radar for sure. All right, the last two bottles on my list are definitely the ones I'm the most excited for. Both of them have something in common, which is extra age from distilleries that we haven't seen that from before. So first is number two, which is gonna be Maker's Mark Cellar Edition. Uh, Maker's Mark, Everything Maker's Mark makes is about six to seven years old. They do that on purpose for consistent flavors. Even their limited release stuff, like the FAE 01 and 02, BRT 01, 02, all that has been six to seven years old-ish, and they've experimented with showing off different parts of their aging process or their rickhouse, but we've never tasted anything older than that, really, from Maker's Mark. This is going to be an 11 and 12 year old blend of bourbons. And man, I am excited. I know that probably you guys are too. Everybody out there has been kind of waiting 
for makers and asking makers to release something older than 10 years. You know, we know they probably have stocks of that stuff and we want to taste it. So apparently this has been aged for six additional years or so in a cellar, so a cooler environment that they could kind of still make sure the whiskey maintains a similar identity to what they want. But 12 year old Maker's Mark, it just sounds phenomenal and I can't wait to try it. It's gonna be about $150 MSRP, but if you ask me for something this special that we've been waiting for for a while, totally worth it. Just before we get to number one, do wanna say, if you're enjoying all the content coming out of the channel, would love to have you aboard as a subscriber for the rest of 2023 and beyond. While you're at it, hit the like button on this video and then comment down below. What have I missed on this list? What are you gonna be keeping on your radar for the rest of whiskey hunting season as it really ramps up here? What are you really hoping to get your hands on? All right, number one on my list is kind of similar to the makers and that's gonna be Old Forester 1924. So this is gonna be a 10 year old version of Old Forester, which from Old Forester, we've pretty much only seen stuff that falls into that four to six year old range, I believe. They do have heat cycled warehouses, which they say allows them to sort of simulate more mature bourbon in that four to six year old range. I taste their stuff and I really love it. I do think it has a nice older, more rounded, rich profile. And I just cannot wait to taste it at 10 years old. I think that it's gonna be so rich and so good. And I think this one's gonna be a little bit more limited. I think it's gonna be harder to find. Sometimes they drop things at the distillery randomly. Maybe I'll try to run down there a couple times this fall and see if I can get lucky. But other than that, just like you, I'll be hoping that I'm in the right place at the right time to see Old Forester 1924 because I think it's gonna be fantastic whiskey. All right, everybody, that's my list, my five, technically six, most anticipated bottles. Again, let me know in the comments below, have I missed something? What are you looking out for in this whiskey hunting season in 2023? How are you doing with your journey so far and what are you hoping to get your hands on by the end of this year? Until I see you guys again for another video, all I can say is keep drinking good whiskey and cheers.